So chapter 35, East of Eden, part one. Lee helped Adam and the two boys move to Salinas, which is to say he did it all. Packed the things to be taken, saw them on the train, loaded the back seat of the Ford, and arriving in Salinas, unpacked, and saw the family settled in Desi's little house. When he had done everything he could think of to make them comfortable, and a number of things unnecessary, and more things for the sake of delay, he waited on Adam formally one evening after the twins had gone to bed. Perhaps, perhaps Adam caught his intention from Lee's coldness and formality. Adam said, all right, I've been expecting it, tell me. That broke up Lee's memorized speech, which he had intended to begin. For a number of years, I have served you to the best of my ability, and now I feel. I put it off as long as I could, said Lee. I have a speech already. Do you want to hear it? Do you want to say it? No, said Lee, I don't, and it's a pretty good speech, too. When do you want to go, Adam asked. As soon as possible. I'm afraid I might lose my intention if I don't go soon. Do you want me to wait until you get someone else? Better not, said Adam. You know how slow I am. It might be some time. I might never get around to it. I'll go tomorrow then. It will tear the boys to pieces, Adam said. I don't know what they'll do. Maybe you'd better sneak off and let me tell them afterward. It's my observation that children always surprise us, said Lee. And so it was. At breakfast the next morning, Adam said, Boys, Lee is going away. Is he, said Cal. There's a basketball game tonight. It costs ten cents. Can we go? Yes, but did you hear what I said? Sure, Aaron said. You said Lee's going away, but he's not coming back. Cal asked, where's he going? To San Francisco to live. Oh, said Aaron, there's a man on Main Street, right on the street, and he's got a little stove, and he cooks sausages and puts them in buns. They cost a nickel, and you can take all the mustard you want. Lee stood in the kitchen door, smiling at Adam. When the twins got their books together, Lee said, goodbye, boys. They shouted, goodbye, and tumbled out of the house. Adam stared into his coffee cup and said, an apology. What little brutes. I guess that's your reward for over ten years of service. I like it better that way, Lee said. If they pretended sorrow, they'd be liars. It doesn't mean anything to them. Maybe they'll think of me sometimes, privately. I don't want them to be sad. I hope I'm not so small-souled as to take satisfaction in being missed. He laid fifty cents on the table in front of Adam. When they start for the basketball game tonight, give them this from me and tell them to buy the sausage buns. My farewell gift may be Potamane, for all I know. Adam looked at the telescope basket Lee brought into the dining room. Is that all your stuff, Lee? Everything but my books. They're in boxes in the cellar. If you don't mind, I'll send for them or come for them after I get settled. Why, sure, I'm going to miss you, Lee, whether you want me to, want me to or not. Are you really going to get your bookstore? That is my intention. You'll let us hear from you? I don't know. I'll have to think about it. They say a clean cut heals soonest. There's nothing sadder to me than associations held together by nothing but the glue of postage stamps. If you can't see or hear or touch a man, it's best to let him go. Adam stood up from the table. I'll walk to the depot with you. No, Lee said sharply. No, I don't want that. Goodbye, Mr. Trask. Goodbye, Adam. He went out of the house, so Adam's goodbye reached him at the bottom of the front steps, and Adam's don't forget to write sounded over the click of the front gate. So part two. That night after the basketball game, Cal and Aaron each had five sausages on buns, and it was just after... And it was just as well, for Adam had forgotten to provide any supper. Walking home, the twins discussed Lee for the first time. I wonder why he went away, Cal asked. He's talked about going before. What are you supposed to do without us? I don't know. I bet he comes back, Aaron said. How do you mean, father? Said he was going to start a bookstore. That's funny, a Chinese bookstore. He'll come back, said Aaron. He'll get lonesome for us. You'll see. Bet you ten cents he don't. Before when? Before forever. That's a bet, said Aaron. Aaron was not able to collect his winnings for nearly a month, but he won six days later. Lee came in on the 1040 and let himself in with his own key. There was a light in the dining room, but Lee found Adam in the kitchen scraping at a thick black crust in the frying pan with the point of a can opener. Lee put down his basket. If you soak it overnight, it will come right out. Will it? I burn everything I've cooked. There's a saucepan of beets out in the yard. Smelled so bad I couldn't have them in the house. Burned beets are awful, Lee. He cried and then, is anything the matter? Lee took the black iron pan from him and put it in the sink and ran water in it. If we had a new gas stove, we could make a cup of coffee in a few minutes, he said. I might as well build up the fire. Stove won't burn, said Adam. Lee lifted a lid. Have you ever taken the ashes out? Ashes? I'll go in the other room, said Lee. I'll make some coffee. Adam waited impatiently in the dining room, but he obeyed his orders. At last, Lee brought in two cups of coffee and set them on the table. Made it in a skillet, he said, much faster. He leaned over his telescope basket and untied the rope that held it shut. He brought out the stone bottle. 
Chinese absent, he said. Nigga pie, maybe last ten more years. I forgot to ask whether you had replaced me. You're beating around the bush, said Adam. I know it, and I also know the best way would be just to tell, just to tell it and get it over with. You lost your money in a fantan game. No, I wish that was it. No, I have my money. This damn cork's broken. I'll have to shove it in the bottle. He poured the black liquor into his coffee. I never drank it this way, he said. Say it's good. Tastes like rotten apples, said Adam. Yes, but remember Sam Hamilton said like good rotten apples. Adam said, when do you think you'll get around to telling me what happened to you? Nothing happened to me, said Lee. I got lonesome, that's all. Isn't that enough? How about your bookstore? I don't want a bookstore. I think I knew it before I got on the train, but I took all this time to make sure. Then there's your last dream gone. Good riddance, Lee seemed on the verge of hysteria. Missy Tlask, Chinese boy, sink gun, get lunk. <laughs> get drunk. So I'm going to read part two again. My fucking, um, what do they call it? My information on my phone is full. But I, I just deleted some apps real quick. So part two, I don't, I'm not sure if Lee's going to go anymore. So part two, that night after the basketball game, Cal and Aaron each had five sausages on buns. And it was just as well for Adam had forgotten to provide any supper. Walking home, the twins discussed Lee for the first time. I wonder why he went away, Cal asked. He's talked about going before. What are you supposed to do without us? I don't know. I bet he comes back, Aaron said. How do you mean? Father said he was going to start a bookstore. That's funny, a Chinese bookstore? He'll come back, said Aaron. He'll get lonesome for us, you'll see. Bet you ten cents he don't. Before when? Before forever. That's a bet, said Aaron. Aaron was not able to collect his winnings for nearly a month, but he won six days later. Lee came in on the 1040 and let himself in with his own key. There was a light in the dining room, but Lee found Adam in the kitchen, scraping at a thick black crust in the frying pan with the point of a can opener. Lee put down his basket. If you soak it overnight, it will come right out. Will it? I burn everything I've cooked. There's a saucepan of beets out in the yard. Smelled so bad I couldn't have them in the house. Burned beets are awful, Lee. He cried and then, is anything better? Is anything the matter? Lee took the black iron, iron pan from him and put it in the sink and ran water in it. If we had a new gas stove, we could make a cup of coffee in a few minutes, he said. I might as well build up the fire. Stove won't burn, said Adam. Lee lifted a lid. Have you ever taken the ashes out? Ashes? I'll go in the other room, said Lee. I'll make some coffee. Adam waited impatiently in the dining room, but he obeyed his orders. At last, Lee brought in two cups of coffee and set them on the table. Made it in a skillet, he said, much faster. He leaned over his telescope basket and untied the rope that held it shut. He brought out the stone bottle. Chinese absinthe, he said, nigga pie. Maybe last ten more years, I forgot to ask whether you replaced me. You're beating around the bush, said Adam. I know it, and I and also know the best way would be just to tell it and get it over with. You lost your money in a fantan game. No, I wish that was it. No, I have my money. This damn cork's broken. I'll have to shove it in the bottle. He poured the black liquor into his coffee. I never drank it this way, he said. Say, it's good. Tastes like rotten apples, said Adam. Yes, but remember Sam Hamilton said like good rotten apples. Adam said, when do you think you'll get around to telling me what happened to you? Nothing happened to me, said Lee. I got lonesome, that's all. Isn't that enough? How about your bookstore? I don't want a bookstore. I think I knew it before I got on the train, but I took all this time to make sure. Then there's your last dream gone. Good riddance, Lee seemed on the verge of hysteria. Missy Tlash, Chinese boy, sink gun, get blunk. Adam was alarmed. What's the matter with you anyway? Lee lifted the bottle to his lips and took a deep hot drink and panted the fumes out of his burning throat. Adam, he said, I am incomparably, incredibly, overwhelmingly glad to be home. I've never been so goddamn lonesome in my life. <laughs> Hell yeah, Mr. Lee. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Mr. Lee. Anyway, uh, peace.